Praise the Lord. Final solution retreat participants. Praise the Lord. Final solution. This time will not pass you by. Every problem, your personal life, every problem in the family, every problem in your profession, every problem you've been battling with for such a long time, the final solution has now come. It will be yours. What are you? Father, in Jesus' name. Well, thank you, Lord, because you have brought us to this retreat. What a retreat. How you've been speaking to us from all your ministers, either in preaching or singing. We know that everything that has been uttered from your word in preaching, by declaration, by singing, they are fulfilled in Jesus' name. You grant everyone the final solution. The ministers who are preaching to us, final solution. The singers who are singing to us, final solution. Usher, security, everyone involved, final solution. Among the children, the youth and the campus students, and fathers and mothers, leaders everywhere, final solution. And those who are walking behind the screen, behind the curtain, we may not see them, but they are contributing to the progress of this retreat. They will not labor in vain. Final solution for everyone in Jesus' name. Fulfill your word. Grant us victory. Grant us triumph. Grant us authority. We will not fall. We will not fail. Your word will do good in every life in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord. We're reading from Psalm 17. And I'm reading from verse 3. Psalm 17. We're reading from verse 3. Thou hast proved mine heart. Thou hast visited me in the night. Thou hast tried me and shall find nothing. I am purposed that my mouth shall not transgress. Tonight we're looking at the message, tested, trusting, and triumphant in Jesus. Tests do come. Trials do come. Temptations do come. And yet we're sure no temptation, no trial will come to you beyond the grace of God. Every trial, every temptation, every test will produce a testimony in your life. As we trust the Lord, He Himself will make us conquerors, triumphant, overcomers in Jesus' name. Psalm 31. Reading from verse 14. Psalm 31, verse 14. But I trusted in thee, O Lord. I said, Thou art my God. Temptations also came to the psalmist. Trials also came to the psalmist. In fact, he said, Many are the tribulations and the troubles and the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord delivers the righteous from them all. He said, When my trials came, when my temptations came, when the troubles came, verse 14, 
I trusted in you, O Lord, and I said, Thou art my God. My times are in thine hand. Your time, your destiny, your projects, every part of your life, whether you are in the valley or on the mountain top, times of trial, times of temptation, times of trouble, your times are in the hand of the Lord. Deliver me from the hand of mine enemies. Deliver me. You are delivered already. Enemies will not stop your progress. Enemies will not stop your triumph. Enemies will not cancel your victory. Your Redeemer is stronger and greater than them all. And from them that persecute me, there may be persecution, but the Lord will grant you triumph. Amidst your amen. Second Corinthians chapter 2. Reading from verse 14. Second Corinthians chapter 2 verse 14. Now thanks be unto God, which, tell me the next word there, always, somebody shout always, it will never leave you. When you are tried, when you are tested, when you are tempted, always it will cause you to triumph. Which always causes us to triumph in Christ and makes manifest the savor, the sweetness of his knowledge by us in every place, every place, every place, wherever you find yourself, any place you find yourself, any situation you find yourself, Christ will be there before you get there. And it will always, always, always cause you to triumph. I'm looking at cross tonight. I'm looking at victors tonight. Final solution has come. The temptations that laid your back on the ground before. Let those temptations come again. You will overcome. And the enemies that made you to tremble before. Let them come again. He said, a table before me in the presence of my enemies. My cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life triumphant permanent triumph triumph and perpetual triumph and daily triumph perfect triumph has come your way what is the conqueror you will conquer already the message you have seen number one tested Number two, trusting. Number three, triumphant. Look at somebody who was tempted. Tempted sorely. Tempted terribly. Tempted in such a way he couldn't have understood. But he overcame. A young man like yourself. A person like yourself. If he overcame, I'm sure you're going to overcome. And when the temptation came, the people were not saying, testing, testing, testing. He didn't know. They were not saying, tempter, tempter, tempter. He didn't know. They were not saying, temptress, temptress, temptress. They didn't announce. They came unawares. They took him unawares. 
He thought everything was all right, and suddenly the tempter came, the temptation came, but all the same, he overcame. No tempter will take you by surprise. No temptation will take you by surprise. Psalm 105. Psalm 105, verse 17. He sent a man before them. Hold on. He sent a man before them. He's talking about Joseph. As he was coming, they said, here comes the dreamer. Here comes the visionary. Here comes the one that's always having ideal. Let us kill him. And then we'll see what will become of his dream. They thought they were going to do that to Joseph. Whatever God has not ordained will not happen to you. If any temptation comes, if any trial comes, if any trouble comes, there's a purpose. The Lord is sending you to where your dream will be fulfilled. But 17 is saying to a man before them, even Joseph, who was sold for a servant whose feet the hurt with fetters and he was laid in iron until the time that his word came until the time that his word came my word will come the time of your exaltation will come. All the words of exaltation, all the words of promotion, all the words of realization, your word will come. But the path to the fulfillment may be the path of trial, the path of temptation, and the path of trouble. Don't look at the temptation. Don't look at the trouble. Don't look at the tempter. Don't look at the temptress. Be watching for your word that will come. And that word will come. Verse 19, until the time that his word came, the word of the Lord tried him. The word of the Lord tried him. Let me explain to you. The Lord did not come out into the open, standing there, and Joseph seeing him, and Joseph saying, Oh my God, you are there. My Lord, you are there. Uh -uh. It was like he was alone. And then the temptation came, the trial came, and the Lord was watching. It's like he drew the curtain and he peeped and was looking at everything. And Joseph did not know that God was watching. God is always watching. When a temptation is going on and you look around, left, right, backward, front, up, Nobody in sight, but God is watching. He will find you victorious. Look at Genesis chapter 39. Genesis 39. And Joseph was brought down to Egypt. They had sold him. The account tells us later, he cried. He pleaded. He told them, my brothers, don't do this. He himself did not know. Everything will work for your good. You must know 
that if God allowed that temptation, if God allowed that trial, it will work for good in your life. Somebody say amen. amen. So they sold him. They sold him to people he never knew, strangers. And they took him all the journey and he came to Egypt. And Joseph was brought down to Egypt. And Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, tell me, bought him. It was like property. It was like a commodity. It was like just something you could buy from the market. But don't worry. They put a price on me. They treat me like an inanimate object. They put a price and a stranger, an Egyptian, bought me. Don't worry. That's not the end of your story. And he bought him. And then it says, when he bought him, he brought him down, see there. And he was faithful. In that situation, in that predicament, but still, and the Lord was with Joseph, the Lord will be with you. And he was a prosperous man. And he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. The house of his master, the Egyptian. A foreign master. Not for, not for all your time. Just for now. While God is allowing the test and the temptation and the training to come upon your life you will soon come out of that place and his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his son all that he did to prosper in his son that man already had the final solution even before without having any retreat if God made all that he did to prosper when he didn't even have a retreat to attend we have retreat to attend and we came here for final solution retreat he got it you will get it and Joseph found grace in his sight and he served him and he made him overseer. The brothers who sold him, they'll never be able to tell that they sold him to a place where he will begin to rise. And the people that might bring trial, temptation, trouble, affliction your way, They'll never tell what the affliction is doing. It will give you promotion. And Joseph found grace in his sight. And he served him. And he made him overseer over all, over his house. And all that he had, he put into his sand. I think Joseph at this time, but be thinking, this is the dream that I saw. Look at it now. I am overseer. My brother, that is level one. You are going to level two. You are going to get to level three. You will get to the final level. The people who knew you before that trial, before that temptation, when they look at you, after the temptation, he will not recognize you again. And then something happened. But understand, we're going on a journey. And this journey will lead you higher and higher and higher. 
But you must understand, God is watching. Verse 7. And it came to pass, after these things, that his master's wife cast her eyes on Joseph. Think about that. You know, sometimes when you have trouble, when you have trial, and when it appears the road is rough for you, you look dejected, you look depressed, you are emaciated, you are ugly, because you carry a big load on your shoulders. Look at this, Joseph. With all the trial, with all the trouble, no depression, you will not have depression. No distress, you will not have distress. And there was no tiredness and weakness that the fellow will become, will look ugly. The man, the young man was looking fresh. In your trial, you look fresh. In your temptation, you remain strong. And so Potiphar's wife did not see any dejection, any depression, any kind of trouble making him older than he really was. He saw a handsome, fresh, good-looking young man, Joseph. And she cast her eyes on Joseph and she said, lie with me. And he refused. You will refuse. You know, conquerors, there are things conquerors will never do. And God is watching. In the time of your temptation, maybe in your house, maybe in your office, maybe in your community, maybe you're traveling, you're in a bus, you're in a taxi. Maybe you get to the village and the believers are not there. And then somebody like this will think that you are an instrument for temptation. You will not yield. But he refused and said unto his master's wife, Behold, my master knoweth not, that's the meaning of that word there, whateth not, what is with me in the house? And he has committed all that he has into my hand. And I will not misuse my privilege. I should have been a slave. I should have been a servant. I should have been like the rags they use seen mopping the floor. But look. I don't have a mother here. I don't have a father here. I don't have any contact here. I don't have any helper there. And the Almighty God has so helped me, promoted me, exalted me, made me an overseer over his house. And he has put everything in my hand. I will not abuse my privilege. You will not abuse your privilege. You will not abuse your promotion. You will not abuse your, your exaltation in Jesus' name. He says, My master knoweth not what is with me in the house. And he has committed all that he has to my hand. There is none greater in this house than I. Look at that. There's some people, if they attain a high position that they never dreamt of, they never thought of, they have authority, they have power, they are highly exalted in the house, in the company, in the firm, in the market, in the church. There is none greater in this house than I. They think they have immunity. And they think whatever I do, because of my great position, 
did you not take sufficient of the grace of God to make them understand that they should not abuse their position or authority? There are some so-called pastors or churches. We're not talking about other churches. I'm not preaching to other churches. I'm preaching to you. A pastor, exalted, promoted, and none greater than him in that local assembly. They take God for granted. And they think they have immunity. Whatever I push, pull, drive, draw, do, undo, who is greater than I? Who can challenge me? But Joseph knew he was on a journey. Satan will not cut short your journey. You know, he brought this temptation because he had seen ahead that Joseph will be the savior of a whole nation, Egypt, so that they will not perish. And he wanted them to perish. And so he came now as he do this one. You'll enjoy it. You'll love it. And nobody will know. The woman herself is the one presenting herself to you. She's not going to tell the husband. You retain your position. And then you have the wife of your master on the side. But look at verse 9. There is none greater in this house than I, neither has he kept back anything from me but thee. You know, there are some people, they have a lot of privileges, a lot of opportunities. They can do this, they can do this, they can do that. Only one person is reserved that they cannot have anything with because of the position of that Potiphar's wife. You are the only one he has kept away from me. Every other thing I have my liberty. But you know, like Adam and Eve, all the trees were there in the garden. The tree of life was there in the garden. And all the other trees were there. But the only tree that was forbidden, that was what they went after. You will not be like that. I will not be like that. The Lord confirm it in your life in Jesus' name. The glory land the Lord is leading you to. The high position the Lord is leading you to. The useless woman, Potiphar's wife, will not take that position from you. There is none greater in this house than I, neither has he kept back anything from me. But thee, because thou art his wife, how then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? Do you remember that Joseph did not have one single book of the Bible to read because Moses, who wrote Genesis, had not been born. He didn't have the written word, but he called adultery great wickedness. How then can somebody, a preacher, a worker, a deeper, deeper, deeper life member who knows the Bible, who has read Many parts of the Bible from Genesis Revelation does not know that adultery, fornication is great wickedness and they mess up their lives. 
the Lord will forgive the past. From now on, you will be clean. That man overcame sin. You will overcome sin. But you know, tempters don't give up easily. If you don't have a mind to overcome, if you don't have the purpose to overcome, if you don't have a firm resolution to overcome, if you don't have the conviction to overcome, they will come again. They will come again. Tempters will not get the better part of you. Look at verse 10. And it came to pass, as he spake to Joseph day by day, some people, they crumble, they collapse. If temptation comes day by day, day after day, week after week. If the fellow is saying, young man, I'm still here and I've been waiting for you. I'm eager. I'm pressed. We must do this together. Look at Joseph. That he hacked not unto her to lie by her or to be with her. And it came to pass about this time that Joseph went into the house to do his business. And there was none of the men of the house there with him. There are some people, when temptations come, if there's nobody there to look at them, to check them, to hear the words they're speaking, and to see the actions of their lives. They say, after all, there's nobody here, and the temptation is stronger. What can I do now? They should do what Joseph did. If you're going to have triumph, I will have triumph. I said, I will have triumph. Verse 12, and she caught him by scamming, saying, Lie with me. And he left his garment in her hand. And tell me, tell me now, don't you want to flee? Say it. And fled and got him out. You will get out of trouble. You will get away from temptation. The Lord wants one of the foremost disciples in Luke chapter 22. Luke chapter 22 want him of the approaching temptation. Want him of what will happen. But this one was not as careful as Joseph. You'll be as careful as Joseph. Luke chapter 22. I'm reading from verse 31. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee. That thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. Verse 33, and he said unto him, Lord, don't worry about me. I don't have to pray. I don't have to watch. Don't think about me. Lord, I am ready to go with thee both unto prison and to death. Look at verse 40. And when he was at that place, he said unto them, Pray that she enter not into temptation. And yet, Peter, Simon Peter, will not pray. You will pray. 
you will not take the grace of God for granted. You will not say, no, it cannot happen to me. Look at verse 54. In verse 54, Then took they him, and led him, and brought him into the high priest's office. And, tell me, and read it now. And let me hear your voice. Peter followed a pharaoh. No prayer. No watchfulness. No close intimacy with his Lord. He followed a pharaoh. And when they had kindled a fire in the midst of the hall and was set down together, Peter sat down among them. Can you imagine receiving any benefit from the people that have taken his Lord and Master? Can you imagine people that will take any benefit from those who hate the Lord, from those who hate their church leader, and he sat down among them. Sometimes where you sit, sometimes where you stay, sometimes where you go, can become a source of temptation. The Lord deliver every one of us. Verse 56, but a certain mage beheld him as a such by the fire and earnestly looked upon him and said, This man was also was he. Verse 57 And he denied him, saying, Woman, I know him not. He said, He didn't know Christ. I will not deny my Lord. Temptation will not make you deny the Lord. Thank God he repented. For 62, and Peter went out and wept bitterly. He repented, and the Lord had mercy on him. Tonight, mercy for you. First Corinthians chapter 10. In First Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12. Wherefore, let him that thinketh standeth, take heed, lest he fall. Wherefore, let her that thinketh she standeth, take heed, lest she fall. Verse 13. There has no temptation taking you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful. Amen. Who will not allow you, permit you, suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able? But will with the temptation also make a way to escape that thou may be able to bear it wherefore my dearly beloved do what joseph did flee from idolatry flee from idolatry don't have any object in mind that is so precious any action that is so important i must do this i must do this i must do this and then the devil will use that idol will use that person will use that personality will use that money will use that thing your heart is set on by all means to tempt you and to make you fall Flee from idolatry. 
you will not hold any man on earth, any woman on earth, any object on earth, any material thing on earth, any position on earth as an idol that you are running after. And then temptation will come through that idol and you fall. You will not fall. Hebrews chapter 2. In Hebrews chapter 2, verse 18, for in that he himself, Christ, has suffered being tempted, he is able to succor them, support them, help them, strengthen them that are tempted. He will strengthen you. Hebrews chapter 4 I'm reading from verse 14 Hebrews chapter 4 verse 14 seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens Jesus the Son of God let us hold fast a profession for we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but he was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we we obtain mercy and find grace to hell in time of need. You'll find grace. You'll overcome those temptations of the past that because of your weakness of the flesh, weakness of resolution, weakness in your consecration, that you fell under no falling anymore. I said no falling anymore. Let's come back to Joseph, Psalm 105. Reading from verse 20, 105, verse 20. The king sent and loosed him. The king sent and loosed him. Because he trusted in the Lord, the king now sent and he set him free. You will not be a prisoner again. You will not be weak. You will not collapse. Nothing will make you fall in Jesus' name. The king of kings will watch over you. He will set you free. He will lose you in Jesus' name. You know the attitude of Joseph? He took everything. Before I say what I want to say, Joseph was looking at the dream the Lord had given him. You see, there are some people, they don't have any dream in life. They don't have any objective in life. They don't have any ideal in life. They don't have any place they know. That is the place I'm going to get to. But Joseph had a dream. God will give you a dream. And he was always looking at that dream. And anything that happened, this is what I wanted to say, he took it as training ground to make him go forward and make progress to get to the dream. That's why temptations came. He said, this will lead me forward. Trial came. This will lead me forward. Affliction came. This will lead me forward. And he took everything that happened to him as training to get him to the place he will be. 
I will be there. I said I will be there. Your life will not be a life of mediocrity. You must be an achiever. You have come to the place of the final solution. And the final solution has come in your life. You will mount up with wings as eagles. Look at that verse 20 again. The king sent and loosed him. Even the ruler of the people. And he let him go free. Chains are taken away. Fetters are taken away. Bondage taken away. Yoke totally broken. And he made him lord of his house. See what happened. Potiphar made Joseph overseer of his house. But Potiphar was a servant of Pharaoh. Now Pharaoh himself made Joseph the lord of his house and a ruler of all his substance higher than the position he had before. When you pray and you trust in the Lord and God gives you victory day by day over temptation, the next time I see you, you'll be in a higher position. In verse 22, to bind his princes at his pleasure and to teach his senators wisdom. Look at the promotion. He now became a teacher, an instructor of the senators. Are you thinking of where God will take you to? What eyes have not seen? What ears have not heard? What has not entered into the hearts of any of your relatives? They look at you and they say, that's so and so. They're looking at you like when you grow up with them in the primary school. My friends, things are different now. They're looking at you as when you are your natural self. My brother, my sister, your situation is different now. Your people will not be able to recognize you when the Lord reveals where he's taking you to. Everything happening now, take it as training and be tenacious. Don't ever give up. If you give up, you're giving up your crown. You're giving up your position. You're giving up your title. You're giving up your promotion. You're giving up your exaltation. God forbid you will not give up. Job chapter 23. In Job chapter 23 verse 10. But he knows the way that I take. When... He has tried me, tested me. I will come forth as gold. All the tests will be like training, temptation, like training, trials, like training, affliction, like training. Affliction will not finish you. Temptation will not finish you. When you send your child for training, Training will not kill your child. It's to make him, it's to make her get up. She will come back home. And when she comes back home, she will bring a certificate of success. You are going through training now. And the Lord, after the training of the trials, the temptation, the trouble, the difficulties, will give you a certificate of well done, come to the next level. He knows the way that I take. When he has tried me, 
I will come forth as gold. My foot has held on his steps. He said, I am tenacious. I hold it with a firm grip. Temptation will not blow me up. My foot has held on his steps. His way have I kept and not declined. Neither have I gone back from the commandment of his leaves. I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. That the way of the overcomer, that will be your way. And you see what he said? He said, I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food. What did he mean by that? Breakfast, necessary food. But he said, no Bible, no breakfast. I'm going to first of all take the bread of life, the word from the mouth of the Lord, and I set the principle of no breakfast, no Bible, no breakfast. I must read the word first, hear the word first, meditate on the word first before I take my breakfast every day so that as your body is growing stronger, your spirit will be going stronger. And then it means no scripture, no supper. No scripture, no supper. In the morning, I'll read the word. In the evening, I'll read the word. And the word will make you strong. Look at Job chapter 17. I'm reading from verse 9. The righteous also shall hold on his way. And he that has clean hands shall be he that has clean hands shall be stronger and stronger. You are stronger today than you were yesterday. You'll be stronger tomorrow than you are today. You'll hold on tenaciously to the word of God. First Corinthians chapter 9. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9, reading from verse 24, Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize, so run. Don't just walk leisurely. It's a race, run. You were on. I said you were on. So run that she may obtain, you will win the crown. Let your eyes always be on the prize. And when you are running every day, don't forget, don't be flabby, don't be careless, don't allow temptation to weaken your resolve. You understand, you are running for the crown. And in verse 25, and every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Temperate in all things. You are self controlled in everything. Even in good things, talking is good. And if you talk, 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 all the grace of God in your life can leak out. Love is good. Be temperate. I love everyone. I love everyone. Good morning. Good afternoon. I love you. 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 Be temperate. Some people will misunderstand that kind of language, talking that to everybody. Mercy is good. Be temperate. Don't show mercy to the Pharisees, Sadducees. Don't show mercy to Delilah. 
and don't expose your secrets to Delilah. You know, I love everybody and I'm free with everybody. I'm free for everybody. No, don't be free for everybody. You must be temperate in all things if you're going to overcome. You will overcome. Something was not temperate in everything. Solomon was not temperate in everything. Even David was not temperate in everything. Watch, look before you leave. Every man that strives for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown. But we are incorruptible. I therefore surround. Paul the Apostle said, I don't live a day without keeping on the race. I therefore surround. Not as uncertainly. So fight I. Not as one that beateth the air. But... I keep my body under. You understand how old Paul was at this time? But he wasn't married. And he said, yes, I'm an apostle. Yes, a pastor. Yes, an evangelist. Yes, a prophet. Yes, a teacher. But I don't take things for granted. Even though I'm older than all these Corinthians, yet I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. You will not be a castaway. I will not be a castaway. Uh, you know some people, oh, they say, look at how old I am. How old are you? Older than Paul the Apostle in age. And they bring ladies to their office, oh, they say, I'm pastor, pastor, I hear you. When you begin to cry, that cry will get over here to the headquarters. I pray you'll not cry. I pray you'll not fall. And he locked the door and they have, oh, they say, you know, it's a teenager. They say, it's a young woman. What can I do? You underage the devil. I pray the devil will not fool you. The devil will not fool me. Second Corinthians chapter one. In Second Corinthians chapter one, we're reading from verse eight. For we would not, brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble, which came to us in a share, that we were pressed out of measure. Above strength is so much that we despair of life. That's how fast Satan could go. But we add the sentence of death in ourselves that we should not trust in ourselves but in God. Your trust will be in God. We try which raises the dead who delivered us one from so great a death and does deliver two in whom we trust that he will yet deliver us three he delivered in the past his grace is still sufficient today he delivers today every trial, every temptation. The Lord will deliver you. 
and it will yet deliver it will continue to deliver you you will not fall you will keep on standing i said you will keep on standing second timothy chapter 2 in second timothy chapter 2 verse 3 thou therefore endure hardness you know fighting for your life might bring some bruises some discomfort if you are fighting for your treasure you might have some bruises but you know if you cannot endure the heat of the kitchen how can you go there to cook the heat will be there but you are up to eat in jesus name therefore that will endure hardness as a good soldier of jesus christ no man that worries entangles himself for the affairs of this life that he may please him who has chosen him to be a soldier and if a man also strive for the masteries yet you see not crowned except he strive lawfully you're working for the lord you're serving the lord you're serving the people of god if you're going to be crowned if you're going to be rewarded you must do it lawfully faithfully according to the rule the lord will be with you you will endure to the end temptation whether it started yesterday or started today temptation will not get the better part of you you will triumph you will overcome you will be a conqueror you will endure to the very end look at matthew chapter 24 matthew chapter 24 reading from verse 11 and many false prophets shall rise and and it says and shall deceive many i will not be deceived and because iniquity shall abound the love of many shall wash cold but he that shall endure unto the end the same shall be saved are they here today those who will endure to the end the lord will give you grace abundant grace sufficient grace mighty supernatural grace your will trial second corinthians chapter 2 verse 14 now thanks be unto god which always causes us to triumph in christ you remain in christ his grace will remain in you his power will remain in you and his fortitude will remain in you always you will triumph you go to the office come back you bring back you come back with your victory you travel to the village you're coming back you'll come back with your victory the victory you have the triumph you have the power you have and the overcoming spirit you have anywhere you go you will keep it intact until you come back to the fellowship now thanks be unto god we each always causes us to triumph in christ and make us manifest the savor of his knowledge by us in 
every place. How does that happen? Verse 17. For we are not as many which corrupt the word of God. Those who are faithful to the word, they don't misinterpret the word. They don't misunderstand the word. They don't corrupt the word of God. That's how the victory remains. We are not of them who corrupt the word of God, but as of sincerity, but as of God, in the sight of God, we speak in Christ. The Lord will keep you in victory. First John chapter 5. In First John chapter 5, reading from verse 4. First John chapter 5 verse 4. For whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcomes the world, but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. Victory for you. Everywhere, whatever temptation, whatever trial, whatever affliction, victory for you. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, reading from verse 57. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 57, but thanks be to God which giveth us, giveth us, always giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Do you know you are an overcomer? I said, do you know you are an overcomer? Always, every time, in all places, in all trials, overcomer in Jesus' name. In Hebrews chapter 2, Hebrews chapter 2, reading from verse 14, Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14, for as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that he is the devil. The devil is the original source, origi originator of your temptation. It will destroy him from your life. But 15, and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject unto bondage. Fear of death. What makes people to go to occultism? And they're seeking protection. They're afraid of death. What makes them to lead the Bible believing church and go to a syncretic candle burning, incense, incense burning church? Fear of death. What makes them to leave the truth of the word of God of the gospel and go to the people that do not have the gospel? Fear of death. But now you fear no death. Christ has died your death for you. He has tasted death for every man. And now it says he has destroyed him that had the power of death. Verse 16, for verily took on him the nature, took not on him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. Wherefore, in all things, it behoved him, befitted him, to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God. 
to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. For in that he himself suffered, being tempted, is able to succor them that are tempted. He will succor you, support you, help you, uphold you, strengthen you. You will always have the victory. Hebrews chapter 4. I'm reading here from verse 12. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul, spirit, and of the joints and marrow. And is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of infirmities, but he was in all points tempted, like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come. How? Let us therefore come. How are you going to come? Boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to hell in time of need it will sustain you you'll be an overcomer it will inject sufficient faith sufficient power sufficient authority sufficient overcoming spirit into your life in jesus name in galatians chapter 2 Reading from verse 20. Galatians chapter 2 verse 20. I am crucified what Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave me himself for me that's the reason for overcoming you'll be an overcomer you'll be a victor you'll be a conqueror you will be a conqueror Romans chapter 8 verse 37 Romans 8 verse 37 nay in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Any conqueror there? I said any conqueror there? Nay, in all these things. Can you say that? I am more than a conqueror. I am more than a conqueror. Whatever the temptation, I am more than a conqueror. Whatever the trial, I am more than a conqueror. Whatever the situation, I am more than a conqueror. Through him that loved me. For I am persuaded. I am persuaded, 
I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate me from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus my Lord. Let the concourse stand up and tell the Lord we have confidence in the Lord. Temptation will not finish you. Trials will not finish you. And all the troubles in the world will not finish you. You'll be more than a conqueror. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord in prayer. Temptations will come as he came to Joseph. Temptations will come as he came to Samson. Temptations will come as he came as he came to David. Temptation will come. As it came to Solomon, temptations will come. As it came to Simon Peter, temptations will come. And it comes to every Christian. Pray that if you had yielded in the past, the Lord will forgive you, will cleanse you will renew you, will refresh you, will make you strong. In these last days, temptation will come in various ways. Tell the Lord, you will be an overcomer. Receive a new strength, a new power, new watchfulness, don't say there's a small temptation, literal mosquitoes kill, don't say it's a small temptation, Little serpents kill. Don't say I will yield this time and overcome tomorrow. Don't boast of tomorrow. You don't know what tomorrow will bring. If you are a compromiser, you are not sure of tomorrow. Temptation by a friend. You will not allow Satan to use a friend to betray you to a kidnapper. How would you then allow a friend? To betray you to temptation. It's my colleague. You don't allow a colleague to betray you to a killer. How would you then allow a colleague to betray you to Satan? To destroy you. Yield not to temptation. 
flee, resist, reject, refuse. Bring your body under, your eyes under, your torch under control. Your tongue, your language. I love you, I love you, I love you to everybody. Bring that under control. Your interaction, bring it under control. Listening to everybody. Answering everybody. Yielding to everybody. Bring that under control. It's a church man, uh huh. It's a church woman, uh huh. Devil can use them too. Like he used Simon Peter, telling the Lord, You will not go to the cross. And Jesus had to rebuke him. Get thee behind me, Satan. For you do not know, you do not savor the things that be of God, but the things that be of men. An older man can be a temptation to a younger lady. An older woman can be a temptation to a younger man. Beware. Don't take the grace of God for granted. Don't take your opportunity or position for granted. Satan is seeking whom he will devour. Don't allow him to devour you. Receive more of the grace of God. And remember, temptation comes in various forms, from different angles. Once you hold onto something like an idol, and you're pursuing it, pursuing it, pursuing it, that thing. You hold like an idol and be a source of temptation. Hold everything in life with a loose hand. Don't be like the monkey that put his hand inside a glass bottle to take some knots. To take banana while holding on to the nuts and the banana is not able to pull his hand out. If he lets go, then he can remove his hand. But if that thing is an idol and you don't want to let go, holding on to it, that's how the hunter, the devil, Will come, meet you there, smash out your head. The way, be an overcomer. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the conquerors say, Amen. Amen. Let the victors say, Amen. Amen. You have overcome. Amen. And your victory will be permanent in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we thank you for alerting us, for reminding us, making us to know 
Temptations are there in the world Coming from Satan Coming from men Even coming from our own flesh We're asking, O oh Lord, that from tonight All your people who have heard your word tonight Victory for everyone in Jesus' name Lord, any failure of the past, any defeat in the past, forgive all your people in Jesus' name. Amen. Cleanse everyone. Wash away all the guilt and the condemnation. Blot out any handwriting that will put down contrary to them in Jesus' name. Take all the guilt away. Take all the condemnation away. And now give grace, abundant grace, to every one of your people in Jesus' name. From now on, your people will watch and pray. From now on, everyone will be a victor. Everyone will be triumphant. And your grace, your mercy, your love, your power, your strength, your protection will go with everyone in Jesus' name. Final solution. Final strength. Final foresight. Final conviction. Final confidence. Final ultimate power. Sufficient grace give to everyone in Jesus' name. You have done it. You have done it. Everyone a conqueror. Everyone an overcomer. Everyone a victor in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord, for what you have done. We will not go back to where we came from. New life. New light. New power. New victory. We'll continue to enjoy. Everyone, in Jesus' name we pray.